the first air house dedicated to the mental realm. It's the natural house of the Mercury ruled sign of Gemini. And because of this association, the third can seem like it's about a handful of disparate things, of language and siblings, neighbors and elementary school, messaging and the concrete mind. What do all of these things have in common? They're all part of our interaction with the immediate early environment. If you have to call this the house of any one thing, you'd have to call it the house of learning. Let's break it down, starting with language. Language is a major factor in the zone of life we call the third house because language and learning are inseparable. Language allows us to name things and compare one thing with another. It lets us separate mind from body and ourselves from the actions we perform. I am not the Frisbee. I throw the Frisbee. These concepts give us control over the environment, and that supports the sun's actualization. Unless we have special skills, we don't consciously remember a time prior to language. But Helen Keller was able to describe that world. She was deaf blind and without language for seven years prior to Annie Sullivan teaching her a vocabulary. She said that the wordless world in which she lived was a swirling chaotic mess. And when she learned her first word, water, something broke through her misty, undifferentiated existence. She said that first word was sunlight. It was the thrill of something returning to her, an awakening in her soul. As she learned more and more words, her tiny gray world began expanding. Later, she graduated from Radcliffe and made movies. And she remains one of the most admired people in all history. How language worked for Helen Keller is how it works for us, only our circumstances are different. Our expansion is less dramatic, more incremental. But when we learn the name of something, we begin to gain control over it. There's even a psychological theory that individuation can't occur without some form of language. I think that's true. With language, we can begin understanding things in a rational, concrete way. The sign on the third house cusp and planets within the third describe our language style, our word choices our cadence, even the subject matter we favor, and the way we put thoughts together. Neptune in the third will have an intuitive mind, a dreamy way of speaking, an imaginative and poetic feel to the language they use. Scorpio on the cusp of the third tends to be laconic, they use powerful and graphic word choices and speak only when it's relevant. Uranus there says shocking things. They may be activistic, radical. They may even have a surprisingly thick accent. But as the natural house of Mercury, the messenger, the third house covers not just speaking, but all forms of messaging from writing and texting to body language and smoke signals. All communication is here. Likewise, the overall mental style of a person is found in the third. Do they prefer concrete or abstract thinking? 
Are their thoughts local and grounded? Or do they go big and take risks? Don't forget too, there are different levels of communication. There's outer communication that we have with others and the inner kind we have with ourselves. Both of these are in the environment of the third house. In fact, if anything matters more and tells more about us, it's how well we fare in our own minds and how kind we are to ourselves as that ticker tape of language flows through. The third house is still in the first quadrant of the chart, which has to do with the earliest segment of life. The first house and ascendant symbolize birth, the second what we possess. Now the third symbolizes toddlerhood, preschool, and even elementary school. That's a time in life when we're learning like a sponge. We're not just assimilating rules about the classroom either, but laws about everything. What's acceptable in every aspect of life. We're taking in the world in bits and pieces, Gemini style. It's a time of exploration, probably the most intense we'll go through as we absorb with a sense of delight and discovery all the things around us that will one day seem mundane. We also find siblings and extended family in this house, such as cousins, aunts, and uncles, because these are the earliest relationships we have. Siblings are usually our first peers. And in the case of only children, you still have neighbors in the third house, all the streets of the neighborhood. Likewise, media is here. That used to mean newspapers and comics, then three channels on the TV. Now it involves information streaming through every device. Parents would like to think that learning comes through them, but parents have their own houses in the chart unrelated to the whole dynamic we're discussing. Our early experiences of the flow of information, the learning we do is so important because it imprints us with attitudes and beliefs. We tend to reenact the relationships we had with extended family and siblings and classmates. We find the same exact things happening with coworkers and bosses and current neighbors. Our early experiences of school tend to predict what kind of student we'll always be. The third house cusp is the lens through which we experience our original local environment. And this lens becomes a feedback loop. Let me explain what I mean by that. The sign on the cusp of the third predisposes us to view the local environment in a certain way. We then develop attitudes and opinions that reflect that sign. Quickly, these turn into expectations. And once we expect to experience something, we do. We see the same things over and over, and we ignore the same things over and over. Some aspect of the sign on this cusp will express in every single aspect of this house. Sometimes it'll be a lower vibration of the sign, sometimes a higher vibration. Sometimes we'll be near cliche in the expression, and sometimes we'll be in a dusty corner of it, but we can't get away from it. 
The sign on the third shows not only how we interact with the local world, but also what we tend to feel intimidated by. Some things in the world are bigger and more complicated than we can handle. The third house cusp shows what those things tend to be. It also describes our attitudes towards mental curiosity, the subjects we're drawn to and why, and the ways in which we experiment with the world around us. Related to that, transits through the third bring plenty of opportunities to learn. They show us where and how to refresh and update, even reinvent ourselves depending upon the planet passing through. Third house transits at their core bring the opportunity to break out of not very constructive childhood patterns. We may also have to ask how and where we're getting our news and what influences we're absorbing in our daily world and change those if they've grown tired or have become toxic. The sign on the third also indicates how well we deal with the details of daily life, such as commutes and errands, and emails and grocery lists. The key to happiness is by approaching the immediate environment as a young child would. If you keep discovering things, learning new words, and finding new routes, you're actualizing the third, which means you're actualizing the sun. The sign here tells how you're most likely to be able to recapture that early sense of discovery. Thank you for watching Secrets from an Astrologer's Desk, the third house. Stay tuned for all the ways you can get in touch for a birth chart reading and full astrological services. I'm Joy. The fourth house is next. Mm -hmm.